Hey, good morning, everybody. John here with FNP War Gamers. This is the FNP Morning Show. We're here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, usually right at 10 a.m. Today, I'm just a little bit behind because uh, I was. I'm going to be honest with you. I had to wait for this coffee to finish brewing. So I had to scramble back here and say, guys, we're going to wait till 10.05 because I needed some coffee this morning. So let's get into what we're going to talk about today. Uh, first up, of course, we're going to be talking about Games Workshop because, as I've always said, they are the big boy, big girl, big business on the block. And they are the bully boys, if you will. So we're going to go ahead and just cover a bunch of stuff. And since they're usually more in the news than other games, we're definitely going to chat about them more often. So this is day 18. I'm going to do this in slight reverse. Day 18 of the Advent Calendar Rumor Engine. So my guess is, based on the construction, this is definitely Warhammer 40,000. It's got the little power nodule down near the uh, the hand that you can the gloved hand or the gauntleted hand you can see in the upper right hand corner of the image with it being a power weapon it's a, f a flanged mace or a style of a flanged mace and i might be saying flanged wrong but in all appearances pretty sure this is going to be in regards to sisters of battle uh it's probably the um, there, there's supposed to be a new Canonus, Canis, Canonus model coming out. And my guess is it's going to have a bunch of options because we've seen it with, I believe, a power sword and now this mace. So this is, I don't think it's going to be anything new. Uh, I don't think they need any new kits, but who knows? Maybe when Sisters of Battle rolls out uh, for 9th edition, they might include a new unit, a new never before seen unit. Maybe a unit of. Of like uh, almost like a Space Marine veteran squad, where they the veteran squad can take all variety of and and I know they've already got the Dominions and the not the Seraphim the Dominions and the Celestines. Maybe this could be a uh, a specific kit for the Celestines or Dominions that they've got a variety of close combat weapons and ranged weapons that's that are available to take, but currently don't have access to or it could just be a random model so who knows we're gonna find out sometime in 2021 probably before may so that's a good sign because usually when they do these images we see them within about four to six months so my guess is that by may the end of their fiscal year good morning noms cloud um by the end of their fiscal year we will see uh, that model. So Sisters of Battle probably slated between now and May 2021. This next one, probably a fantasy flag, a banner. My guess is since there was another image, a couple actually other images that really lent itself to be inhuman, probably some new Cities of Sigmar style units. Uh, that's my current guess. And I'm actually, I'm just going to stick with that guess. So Let's talk about, um, uh, we're going to get into Atomic Mass games here in a minute. We're going to, we need to get into the rumors and, uh, you know what? Screw this. We're going to go ahead and talk about Atomic Mass games ish, ish. Let me take a drink of coffee. So this is an opinion piece that does concern inadvertently, uh, Marvel Crash Protocol from Atomic Mass games and, other games like uh, Star Wars, Legion, um, Arena Rex, Wild West Exodus, Malifaux, um, kind of bolt action-ish, um, so, and of course Infinity. Now, Games Workshop, if you guys have not noticed, and I've talked about this for well over a year now, well, actually almost two years now, since about 2019, Games Workshop has across the board not even like stealthily they just blatantly have been tacking on a 19 or sorry a 20 to about almost 25 percent increase on every product coming out and it's absolutely ridiculous and for years people are like oh gw is pricing themselves out of the market gw is pricing themselves out of the market they're going to be dead in a year dead in a year you know and for years i would say you guys were wrong but Games Workshop is, I think, 
maybe their popularity has gone to their head a little bit or their business model is uh, needs to be revamped. Reason why I say this is that they are now about every three years, every three years, they are redoing the their, their Warhammer 40,000 game. And in a way, Age of Sigmar, they do it a little differently. But every, about every three years, hey, we got new models, we got new codexes, we've got new cards, we or battle tomes, or war scroll cards. We've got uh, a new rule book, a new starting set. And that price keeps increasing and not just like a hey five dollars here ten dollars there um it we've gone from about a hundred dollar starter set from say back in 2016 ish no no 2011 2012 when dark vengeance came out now we're at uh what was it what was indominus 210 dollars that's a hell of a price increase even eighth edition which had more miniatures in it 8th edition that came out 2017 had more miniatures in it and it also had um, a hardback rule book was $160. I'm pretty sure it was $160. I'm going to say $160. It could have been a little less, but I'm going to say $160. It had more in it, more content in it than the 9th edition Warhammer 40,000. But the Warhammer 40,000 9th edition went up $50. And you got less out of it. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I've been seeing a shift. In, and good morning to everybody that's on there. Uh, I see you guys. Uh, I'm not ignoring you. Uh, but I've seen a shift at local stores more often now where they are moving away from Warhammer 40,000. And only the only people you're really starting to see come in to play Warhammer 40,000 are the ones that are playing the tournaments. And I'm starting to see at other stores, lots of stores, Worm 40,000 and Age of Sigmar in a little way are just sitting on the shelf. They're no longer the big sellers. And yeah, the economy is really hurting. But people are also getting tired of paying those high prices. Is GW in any danger right now? No. But if they turn around and do another price hike... Let's say for the basic space marines, like the now the intercessor squad, if those intercessors go up, uh, which likely if they do go up, I would say in the next three years they're going to go up five dollars. You are going to see actually the spi the downward spiral finally for Games Workshop, because they'll be increasing that price about the same time that they are going to increase or do a new set. And which is about every now, about every three years, which is way too frequent, way too soon. That right there shows you an immaturity and lack of attention, almost a disposable kind of a mindset, almost treating this like disposable plastic bottles and cups and whatever, where it's like, oh, we'll just make a new edition. You can throw that stuff away and we're just going to keep putting it out and people are just going to keep consuming and then throw it away, consume, throw, consume, throw. It's getting to a point where it's too expensive. And more people right now are switching to these smaller games, like the ones I mentioned, Malifaux, Star Wars Legion, uh, Bolt Action, Infinity, and uh, uh, Team Yankee, Wild West Exodus, uh, and, of course, Marvel Christ Protocol, which it put, you know, when these games are putting out a solid and I do mean solid balanced game and they're putting out regular updates across social media they're putting out regular miniature releases and they're not overcharging for what you're getting they are starting to push GW away so GW has been usually and still is likely one of the top three, or at least the top five sellers at most game stores. But to consider yourself just a, hey, we're only a Warhammer store, those days are rapidly disappearing because of games like the ones I've mentioned, especially the Star Wars games. Forgot about X-Wing and Armada. Uh, yes, these are fringe games, if you will, but the buy-in, the 
less complicated rules that need FAQs every month is really starting to be very encouraging for gamers out there. And all of you friendly local game stores out there, you need to take notice. If Warhammer was your main focus, you need to, you don't have to pull away from it, but if you look at your sales, you look at your stock, which Games Workshop has been dropping the ball on getting stock out, by the way, for the somewhat understandably, but some stores have been not even getting the new regular new releases at all. This is weird. So they're really shooting themselves in the foot. And I think um, within the next, I'd say within the next three years, or maybe at the three years, when we see that inevitable price increase and that inevitable new addition, that is, you're going to start seeing people pull away. And that's going to be such a shame because Games Workshop has so much potential if they would stop what the, they're currently doing with their business model and they could put out a pot you know just meet the middle ground come out with a balanced game 100 percent balanced across the board and dedicate yourself to writing instead of just cranking out all this crap crank out some books that Everything makes sense. Get some spell checkers in there. Get some rules writers and they can go, if this doesn't make any sense because now this contradicts this. And people will love it. And then they'll slow down. That is, or they won't slow down buying. They will stop complaining and stop leaving. When you got games like Marvel Christ Protocol, that people will come in, even if they don't want the miniatures, they're just like, eh, maybe, maybe not. They buy them. They're buying everything coming out. They are becoming the number one seller at stores. So you guys need to take notice, especially you friendly local game stores. So I know that's a bit of an opinion piece, but it's an observation based on we've got eight or nine different stores here in the Houston area alone. And I talk with most of the owners or the uh, TOs and I speak with other members of the community and we're all pretty much going, yeah, yeah, this is this is not good. This is no bueno. Games Workshop, potentially, unless they correct their course, they are going to... They're going to ruin their business model. All right. There was something else there. It's on the... It's, it's just on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember it. So let's get over to... Back over to Games Workshop before we come back to something else. Um, I do want to talk about um, some sneak preview or a sneak peek at some upcoming models, but we'll get to that in a minute. I'll get I'll show that image in just a few minutes. First, I want to talk about the FAQ update. So, FAQ update: uh, We have the Space Wolves and the Death Watch got some per, uh, some okay updates. Uh, the Space Wolves. Okay, got some clarifications. The And this is part of that th thing I was just talking about. They need a, somebody to come in and essentially spell check. And make you know, devil basically be the proofreader for these codexes. Because this update for the... You know, maybe I'll go ahead and pull it up here. For the Death Watch, my favorite chapter, is pretty extensive. Not only is it... I mean, it's almost three full pages. Not only does it have a whole bunch of updates trying to explain how to use the use the rules for all these different type of kill teams that you can make, but also there's point updates. I mean, this is basic stuff, you guys. They're, they're cranking out the stuff so fast that it's, it's really discouraging. And this is coming from a lifelong fan of Games Workshop, but I'm starting to turn my nose up. I have... This year, I've spent... This is probably the one year in the past 10 years that I've spent less on Games Workshop than I ever have ever before. I have done everything I could not to buy because they're they're really pushing pushing me out. I, I From the pricing to the bad rules writing to how often they're cranking stuff, cranking out the product. Hey, I like a new edition like the next guy. I would have preferred if they would have, when they came out with 9th edition, taken another year 
and do what um well and and i know i harp on privateer press a lot with war machine and hordes but they should have done what privateer and press had did a long time ago is what they said hey community we've put this together here's our beta edition go through it tell us what you think give us some feedback and then you go through all that feedback right now I would say I would I, I I'm gonna dare to say it the people the US guys a lot of the US guys that they've got that are play testing are probably not the type of guys that yeah, they're not the the full picture of the type of play testers you want you've got mainly tournament players there and tournament players are very good at spotting these rules but obviously with all these updates and these FAQs and these confusing terminologies, they're not doing a very good job. You need to have a little bit more well-rounded. So I would say keep those guys and then bring more people into the community and get more feedback. I mean, I'm talking hundreds of people. And then you are probably going to get a much more accurate book like they did. So it's just a suggestion. I know you're not going to listen to me, Games Workshop. All right, before I go on to any more of the FAQs, let me check up on chat here. Um, Noms Klaus says, not sure how they have spelling and grammar mistakes when Word, Acrobat, and just about every other program to write on does it automatically now, or at least points it out. You're right. It's I, I when I say spell checker, I really mean um, uh, like a rules writer, somebody to go through and um, check like grammatical or not even grammatical more like uh conflicting information and we're about actually about to get into that there's a lot of conflicting information uh, somebody they really just need a okay so not a spell checker um i don't even know what you would call it um a rules lawyer somebody that's going to look at it and go okay well you guys just wrote this rule for the charybdis drop pod or the uh, i think not cryptus drop pod or is it the cryptus no the um whatever the drop pod is for chaos space marines from forge world uh they can't disembark on the turn they arrive though a drop pod for space marines they can so what's the difference what's going on here and that that's one of the many things that we've come across and i it just it's very dis discouraging to see simple stuff fail uh and you know another example is they could have very easily cleared up one of the biggest biggest problems is when they came out with say the imperial armor book the forge world imperial armor book for all the forge world models for ninth edition Warhammer 40,000 there was glaring errors i mean just errors everywhere and one of the biggest one was it prevented the Thousand Suns Codex and the Death Guard Codex to take units that they could before from the Chaos Book, all because of a stupid keyword or lack thereof. And it, there's a lot of rules writing going back and forth, and basically that department and that department, these departments, see, let's get my fingers in the camera here, these departments on either side are not communicating with each other. And that is stupid. That is so stupid. I, I don't get it. You have access to that entire library. You should have a process, a procedure to go, okay, I'm writing about Predator tanks. So the Space Marine Predator tank, I need to check all the rules for the Predator, the predator Space Marine tank. And then I need to make sure it matches up with whatever tank rules that fall under 9th edition, the new edition. And then I need to communicate over here with my Chaos Space Marine counterpart that has Predator, a Chaos Space Marine Predator, and make sure we're all on the same page. We should be right across the board, even Steven. Same thing with Basic Space Marine. It should be make sure all the Space Marine war gear all matches up. And it, it's so, it's really bad. And I try, you guys know I am a champion of games workshop i i'm a flag bearer i i wave that banner around like it's hot yeah i i love them but they i think they're gotten too big for their pants 
all this big projects they have, they're losing sight of the very most important thing that they should have been working on for the past 10 years. And that's the rules. If they would just do that. And you know what? I, I, I'm not going to encourage you to slow down buying. But you know what? If you slow down the buying, it's probably going to hit them in the pocketbooks. Just like the this whole uh, this whole pandemic has, and vote with, or basically vote with your with your money, vote with your wallet. Tell them, hey, you guys are effing up. So there's a, you know, I just wish they would get their act together. I'm tired of trying to defend them. So there are those updates. We also see the updates of what has gone over to the Warhammer Legends. I understand why they did the Warhammer Legends, but I think they should have just said, hey, these are no longer available, but they're being very nice, letting people still have access to all their um, legend stuff. But you know what? Essentially, Warhammer, if it's a Warhammer Legends unit, it's not in play. Nobody's really using those. Not in vast numbers. So let's get on to some positives. Let's get on to some positives. So Warhammer Board Games. This is the season, ladies and gentlemen. This is the season. So Barnes & Noble. And I think this is the only place you can get these right now. Barnes & Noble. They have Blitz Bowl, which is basically a condensed version of Blood Bowl. Uh, you can get it at Barnes & Noble. I want to say these are like around $40 to $50. You get a, you basically get two half-sized teams. You get the rules. You get a pretty much everything you need to play. This is great travel size, by the way. So if you're traveling to Grandma's house or your... Um, parents house or somebody's house and uh, for the holidays and you want um, a game to play this is a nice portable game you don't have to worry about painting the models and you don't have to worry about carrying all these books everything around everything's in this handy dandy travel box really cool um, and or if you're wanting to get people involved uh, space marine Ven adventures is another one i've talked about a lot this one is another one. It's just a quick board game. There's a lot of different options, even though you only see a couple different tiles there, but there's a lot of playability here. And you get five space marines of different poses that you normally can't get anywhere else. So that's that's a lot of fun too. And we've got some expansions, Rise of the Orcs. Now you get to include Terminators. <clears throat> Same thing. All this and the Crypt Hunters, that's for Age of Sigmar. Basically like a little dungeon crawl with all these... Uh, I think it's like 50 or 60 different tiles that you can sit there and travel with this. And hey, guys, uh, we're bored. We're waiting for so-and-so to come over. Let's play a quick game. You can do that. Combat Arena is another one. I really want to get a Combat Arena because there's a couple um, models that you can only get in that box. Basically, it's Arena Combat for Warhammer 40,000. And then you have Dreadfane, which is kind of like the dumbed-down version. Um, or I shouldn't say dumbed-down the beginner version for Warhammer Underworlds. And it's a, it's a lot easier to play. You don't have to deal with hundreds of different complicated rules. And you get a, the miniatures, it's travel size. That's essentially the reason why I want to bring this up is that it's only available at Barnes & Noble or whatever Thalia is. I'm guessing that's something in the UK or, um, or Europe. But these are quick traveling board games you can sit down and play within less than an hour and have some fun kick back introduce people to the game and whatnot all right so let's talk about first of the rumors after taking a drink of some coffee okay over the past few years um until ninth edition or this uh 2020 there's been a thing out called Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. And I think there it's also Warhammer or Warhammer Age of Sigmar Conquest. I might be wrong on that one. It might actually be in this old article. Essentially, it was a subscription service where you'd get a magazine, get some paints, get some models. And basically, it was walking you through um, building an army or building two different armies, learning how to play, learning how to paint, learning the lore, getting you involved. And it was actually, I think, a real, really good thing. I, I think it was absolutely wonderful. And the more that you bought, the um, more stuff that you could get. Um, now this doesn't have everything there, but um, they basically had this long, drawn-out 
um, program to where you can get um, essentially, hey, if you buy X amount and they keep buying the subscriptions and you buy and then you follow afterwards, there's freebies that you're going to get along the way. I think those are fantastic that they did that. So obviously they stopped doing that uh, earlier this year. I think I want to say April time frame is when we found out they stopped doing it. They might have stopped it before. Regardless, the Warm 40,000 Conquest stopped because 9th edition was right around the corner. They've got new models coming out, a new edition, new rules, new paints, the works. So, word on the street, and right now we have no 100% proof. Got a couple shady looking screenshots. I, I can't say yay or nay on it, but I'm at least going to report on it. That there is a new subscription going to be coming out, and it's probably only going to be over in the UK in Ireland, um, maybe in Europe, that they've never they've never been here in the U.S., but they've uh, been in Japan, they've been in the U.K., and I think they were in Germany and Spain, maybe. I think la the last one for Eighth Edition was in Germany and Spain as well. It's going to be called Warhammer Forty Thousand. Well, there's I think there's going to be two different kits. The Warhammer Forty Thousand Imperium is the one that we've got information on, and the other one's probably going to be Warhammer Forty Thousand Necron, or something Necron Dynasty, or something along that 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 line. And it'll be a, pretty much the same thing. You're going to buy buy into the subscription. You're going to get some free models, some free paints, a brush, the, the the works, and it's going to go along the same path. It's really not necessarily for, I would say, not for uh, people that have already into the hobby, it's more designed to get new people into the hobby. It's like, hey guys, for three or four dollars, we're gonna give you this magazine. You're gonna get a bunch of paints. You're gonna get some models, and we're gonna help walk you through it. It's actually a really cool buy-in. I think it's I think it's a great product that they should be putting out everywhere. Maybe not in like um, hundreds and hundreds of packs. You know, sending out like case after case after case, but a little bit here and there, I think would be very beneficial for growing the community. I don't know. With the way the price increases are going, who knows? So that is rumor number one, a new version of Conquest. We're going to show, I'll come back to this in just a moment. I want to show you guys a sneak peek of a miniature that has been spotted in uh, the White Dwarf. So this is a Necron Cryptek of some sort. No idea which type he is. Uh, right now we've got the Plasmancer, and that's what it looks like. If you can see over on to his left or to the right of the picture, you can see a staff right there, the blade at the top. I'm pretty sure that's the Plasmancer or Plasmancer that comes in the Indominus box. That looks like his weapon of choice, and he's got the little tassels down below. And we've already seen what a cryptech looks like. What we don't know is what the chronoman. Oh, wait, do we already know what the chronomancer is? There's, I think there's two that we don't know. I think it's the chronomancer and, oh gosh, I can't believe I forgot already. There is the one that basically um, causes fear. Let me see if I can, uh, let's do, oh, look at that. Actually, I'll have that in just a second. Hopefully, we don't get any screen loss here because of the website I'm going to. Uh, believe it or not, 4chan for the win. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Uh, let's see here. Come on. Crypto. Da, 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 da. Plasma sites. Where are the... Where are these guys? Are these guys HQs? You guys need to help me out here. You don't need to help me out. I'm trying to figure this out so you don't have to go scrolling through all this garbage like I do. Uh, da, 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 da. I, I know what I'm doing. I do know what I'm doing. I promise. Well, maybe I don't. Well, oh, there we go. Psychomancer. Okay, so there's the Technomancer, the Plasmancer, the Chronomancer, and the Psychomancer. The Psychomancer is the other one I was thinking of. It is the one that basically makes people afraid, makes them run away and stuff. I don't think that that's what this one is. This might be the Technomancer or the Chronomancer. Regardless, we do not have all the Necron models. So when I hear people are like, oh man, there's more Space Marines coming out, because there are. 
We still have not seen the kits for the uh, Heavy Intercessors. So you know that when the Heavy Intercessors come out and when another uh, Primaris Lieutenant comes out, all the Space Marine haters are going to table flip and complain about it. But well, gosh darn, there's another Necroman or another Necron coming out. Well, wow, damn it, they're always putting out Necrons. Poor Eldar, poor orcs. Regardless, this is definitely a model that's coming out. I've went onto the website. I have not seen this model. And since it was in a white dwarf, unless it's a very clever fake image, then we definitely have confirmation that we got more coming out. Now this could this could either be the Chronomancer because he's all bent over and maybe time dilation, time, you know, um, being old and like father time, that sort of thing. That could be the Chronomancer. He's got kind of like a bent in arm or he could be the scary, creepy Psychomancer. No idea. No idea. Or he could be the Technomancer. I have, we have no idea, guys. The good thing is, is that there's a Necron model. That has not been seen and that's coming out. So yay, rejoice. Okay, so I'm going to get this up. I'll go ahead for you guys that are here on. Okay, okay, Chrono, thank you, Text War Gamer. So the Chronomancer is out. He's the one that has uh, the cubes floating around him. So you're, you're definitely right. So maybe that is the Psychomancer. He does look a little creepy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this link in the description and those of you on YouTube, I'll get it down, link down below. So spiky bits, which I generally try not to go to mainly their website because it is such a burden on the computer because there's so much clickbait and ads on there. I mean, it just, uh, it just hurts. Like my computer starts to weep. Uh, they've got, but they do have a contest going on. Uh, Pop Goes the Monkey is offering a $200 gift certificate to their web store. If you've not been to Pop Goes the Monkey, they have a massive bits collection for Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, Orcs, um, and they've got models, 3D printed models. Um, and I want to say there was some, there are some Eldar stuff on there and whatnot. Um, okay, thank you. So it could be the Technomancer. I don't know, Texas War Gamer. Texas War Gamer says the Psychomancer is the one with the um, something something Delta Nine or Charlie on it. So let's take a look. Uh, oh nope nope nope. Let's go. Sorry guys, we're gonna look at this together and we'll come back to uh, Pop Goes the Monkey in just a second. Uh, Psychomancer Necron. So let's take a look. Okay. Oh okay. We haven't, has this model not been released yet? Has this model been released, guys? I don't think it's been released. So there's the Psychomancer, um, and there's the, um, the Chronomancer. So that last one must be the Technomancer, or he's another character. Cool. I, for, I totally forgot about these models. Holy crap. Cool. Thank you, Texas War Gamer. I really appreciate that. All right, let's get back to Pop Goes the Monkey. Anyways, so enter your email. Yeah, you're going to consent to sales, promotions, and, and marketing emails. If you need to, jump on, create a, a dummy account like I have for this sort of thing so I can have all my junk mail go there. Um, anyways, the winner will get a $200 gift card to spend at that store. A lot of badass stuff there guys if you get a chance go take a look um plus every sign up will get three different money saving discount codes for your next miniature hobby purchases from top manufacturers oh i need to go check my email so they said that they'll select one winner uh the week of january 17th 2021 ship shipping to the winner is included some some restrictions will apply you'll see below that is awesome. I already went ahead and did it. I still need to send out some um, emails and some um, uh, Facebook Messenger uh, group things, but I've got, I think, um, around 45 entries. It doesn't hurt to do it, guys. I mean, what's a chance to, I mean, a chance to get it, hold on to it, maybe give it, give it away for somebody. Who knows? Maybe it's some guy that wins it will give, a, give it away give away a whole bunch of stuff on on live stream 
So later on tonight, let me hide this right here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me get this. Let me put up this. So tonight we are working on the, and I, I've been saving it. We, we're going to be working on the Lord Discordant from Warhammer 40,000's Chaos Space Marines on Havoc Maker Studio. We're going to be working on that all night tonight. And I've got a special model we're going to be putting together for Mr. Luke over at Original Human. If you ever get a chance, you can probably just Google. It might be easier to Google Original Human on YouTube or Royal Marine Reacts and watch some of his awesome videos. Get a chance, watch his video of him watching the Astartes movie. Uh, just ab if, if you haven't seen his studies, you definitely need to <laughs> go and watch that. So um, speaking of Havoc Maker Studios, if you go over to the Facebook page or the Twitch channel or both, there's a link to the YouTube channel. And I've got my reaction to the Astartes up right now. And so if you can jump over there, hit a like, subscribe, because subscribe doesn't cost anything. Leave a comment, that sort of thing. I super appreciate it. Let me check what's going on here. Tex Wargamer says none of the new Mancers have been released just yet. Okay, so the only one that we do have is the Plasmancer. So that means that last one is probably the Technomancer. So cool. That's awesome. So we got plenty coming down the line. Thank you, Tex Wargamer. I really super appreciate that. Let me know what you guys think, uh, especially you on YouTube. I'm going to get this video up to YouTube shortly after I sign off here in just a moment. Uh, let me know what you think of my opinion on what's going on with Games Workshop and uh, also in regards to the small games starting to take over, the sk smaller skirmish games starting to push the larger games out. Um, and uh, let me know if you jump on and, and do that for Pop Goes the Monkey. Please, please definitely jump on the chat or leave a comment. Hey, John, I, I did that. Uh, pop goes the monkey thing let me know if you do that i really appreciate it because it uh i can pass on to him saying hey dude helping me out here because you got some awesome product i've been buying their product for like three or four years now so all right it's friday enjoy your weekend please be safe wear a mask social distance wash your hands have some hand sanitizer please 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 set aside your ego set aside your pride your tech especially you texans like oh, i'm a texan i don't have to wear a mask do it so we can stop having these spikes and increases in infections we can get the vaccines and we can just go back on to having a normal life and you can maintain your texas pride like well i never got the covid and be all super powerful and strong and prideful like you guys are so <laughs> you guys know i love you i'm a texan now so have yourself a wonderful weekend i'll see you tonight on havoc maker studio we're gonna do lots of painting and chatting and probably talk some more rumors and leaks sneak peeks and radar sweeps on havoc maker studio thank you guys grapple strange nominous cloud texas wargamer and whoever else is lurking about i really appreciate you guys tuning in it really does make doing this worth it anyways you guys have yourself a wonderful weekend and i'll talk to you guys later on tonight